In this demonstration, we're going to look at configuring claims provider and relying party trusts. Think of a claims provider like your passport provider. Your passport's provided to you by your country, which is your claims provider. And as long as it's trusted by another country, you're allowed access. So the first thing we're going to do here is we've just come to our Active Directory Domain Controller, which is acting as our ADFS server. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to launch up our ADFS management tools. So under Tools, come down to our Active Directory Federated Trust Management. Then the first thing we're going to come to here is trust relationships. So what we want to do here is we actually want to create one of these claims provider trusts. So we click on claims provider trusts. We'll right click Active Directory and what we're going to do here is just edit the claim rules. So we can see we've already got some in place, for example, pass through all Windows account names, pass through all names, claims and so on down this list here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to add a rule. So we'll select add a rule. This will bring us into a wizard. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to send LDAP attributes as claims. So it gives us a little definition of what this exactly means. So we'll select next. Next thing we need to do is configure our claim rule. First thing we'll do here is we'll just give it a name. And we're going to call this outbound LDAP attributes rule. Next thing to do here is go to our attribute store and we're going to store this in Active Directory. Down to our mapping of LDAP attributes to outgoing claim types, if we just select on our little drop down here, what we're going to do is we're just going to fill out this little table. We want to select email address. And what we want to do here is we just want to fill out some additional information. So if we click on the little drop down for our outgoing claim type, what we want here is we want UPN. So what we're seeing here is LDAP attribute is email addresses and outgoing claim type is UPN. We're not going to add anything else, so we'll select finish and then we'll select OK. So now we've created our claims provider, the next thing we're going to do here is we're just going to go across to our web-based server and we're just going to create a certificate for our web-based application. So what we'll do here is we'll just move over to our server, we'll just log in as administrator, And we'll just come to our tools and all we're going to do here is we're just going to go for internet information services. We'll highlight our server. And just double click server certificates. Then we'll select create a domain certificate. And we'll just fill out the table. So what we've done here is we've gone for a common name of lonserve.datum.com, a.datum for organisation, IT for organisational unit, London, England for city and state, and then country, region, GB. We'll select next. Next thing to do here is just specify our online CA. And we're going to go for a datum CA. Then we'll just enter the friendly name, which I'm going to have as a datum test app certificate. Next thing to do here is just select finish. And as we can see now we have our certificate. Next thing to do here is just set up our bindings. So what we'll do here is we'll just come across the sites and go to default first site name or default website. We'll select bindings and select add. Just change this from HTTP to HTTPS. And then what we need to do is just specify our certificate. Then we'll select OK and then just select Close. Now we've done that, the next thing to do is configure a Windows Identity Foundation application for Active Directory Federation services. So we'll just close down IIS Manager. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to go to Tools. And then all we're going to do here is just come down here and go for our Windows Identity Foundation Federation utility. So what we'll do on the wizard here is we'll start filling out the table. I'm going to put down the application configuration location as the c colon backslash inet pub www root date and test app web dot config and the application URI is going to be https colon forward slash forward slash lonserve one dot datum dot com forward slash datum test app. We'll select our next button. 
On our security token service, we'll use an existing security token service. And we'll then enter the location. And the location is https colon forward slash forward slash adfs.adapen.com forward slash federation metadata forward slash 2007 hyphen 06 forward slash federation metadata dot xml. And then next thing we'll do here is just select our next button. Just on our STS signing certificate chain validation error, all we're going to do here, as it says, this STS uses self-issued certificate for token signing, chain validation failed on one or more, so we are just going to disable certificate chain validation We're using self-signed certificates, so we'll select next. We've got lab environment, so we're going to go for no encryption, and select next. Quickly review our offered claims, we're happy with all of this, so we'll just select next again. Then just on our summary page, we'll have a quick read through. So we'll scroll this down a little bit. We're happy with all of this, so we'll select finish. And as you can see, we've now successfully configured our application. So we'll select our OK button. Next thing we need to do here is configure a relying party trust. So in order to do that, we're just going to swap over to our client machine. We'll just verify this is running. And the next thing we'll do now is we'll just go back to our domain controller and actually create our relying party trusts. So what we have here is we'll go to our relying party trusts. What we want to do is we want to add one. So if we right click at this point here, we'll just add a relying party trust. This will bring us into a wizard. So just on the welcome page here, all we're going to do is we're going to select start. We're going to make sure we've got import data about the relying party published online or on a local network. And then we just need to fill out our federation metadata address. Going to enter that as https colon forward slash forward slash one serve one dot adapen dot com forward slash adapen test app. Then what we'll do at this point here, we'll select next. We'll now fill out our display name, which we'll set to adapen test app and select next. I'm not setting up multi factor authentication, so I'll select next. I will permit all users to access this relying party, so we'll select next. Am I ready to add trust? I'll select next again. And then all we'll do is we'll just select close to actually finish all of this off. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thanks very much.